because now we're going to talk about the uh, the cutting edge of what's being done around the battle against uh, hydro privatization now in Toronto uh, based upon some of the experiences of uh, folks who fought this battle as Rob was saying for the past 25 years John Camillari is president of the local at, at uh, Toronto Hydro uh, QP Local 1 is the latest inheritor of that uh, of that incredible tradition <laughs> and Preeti Suvakumar Suva 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 I'm sorry I didn't have the sheet with me in the beginning is uh, works for QP as an organizer around uh, all kinds of campaigns particularly this one but has a, a history of working with the labor movement uh, she used to work for the Toronto La uh, District Labor Council and um, uh, they are going to talk about how to engage in this current stage of this campaign and I think that we should take this as sort of a way of bridging this what the, two, the, the two narratives here one is the underlying more deeper issues that were just raised in the last uh, in the last panel and a number of times uh, and by the speakers at the beginning as well as so what do we do to build this there was over a hundred people here at one time at the very beginning of the day that are interested obviously in challenging privatization so what are some of the steps we can take uh, to follow that up? So who's going to speak first, Preeti? Hello, everyone. Um, so John and I are going to talk to you a little bit about where our campaign's at. He's going to talk a little bit more about Toronto Hydro. But I'm just going to take a few minutes to tell you about our campaign strategy um, and talk a little bit about the Scarborough event that you've heard uh, about already. Um, so phase one of our Keep Hydro Public campaign, uh, we were able to go and talk to a lot of people across Ontario in lots of different communities. Fred, uh, a bunch of speakers from community organizations, all kinds of speakers. And what we found was people from across the political spectrum were worried about hydro privatization from all walks of life, uh, people who were uh, in the agricultural sector, um, uh, um, uh, you know, all kinds of all kinds of folks. So in, in Guelph, uh, a single mom told us, you know, she was struggling to pay her bills. Um, in Oshawa, a senior stood up and said, our church had to raise money so that some of my neighbors could pay their bills and pay their rent. Um, in Thunder Bay, farmers told us that they can't afford any more electricity uh, price increases. City councillors came to some of these meetings as well that we'd organized and 194 municipalities passed a resolution calling on the province to stop the sale. Eventually, when we did some polling in September, we found we've been doing polling uh, along the way, and it was pretty clear people are people get this issue, they're against hydro privatization. We didn't really have to go out and do a lot of convincing. We just had to tell people that we wanted to stop this. And 85% of people in Ontario today, probably more, uh, think it's a bad idea. So our job isn't to convince people that this is wrong. Uh, we don't think that you know our main task is to tell people, well, you know, privatization is a bad idea, and here's why, because people already agree. The public is on side with us, but that's just part of part of what we need, right? Um, having public opinion is just one piece. Obviously, it's an important piece, but that's just one thing. The next step is to convert that into actually focused campaign action that can cause the Liberals to back off and stop at 15%. And that's where our campaign is at now. Um, and when we launched phase two, our, our message is, they can stop at 15%. 85% still belongs to us and let's keep that. Because I think the biggest problem we face is not that people don't get the problem, they get why privatization is bad. But the biggest problem is people don't think we can stop it because they believed that it's already over. So that's um, what we're facing, and uh, you know, um, Kathleen Wynne knows this. She knows that people don't like this idea. She went ahead and did it anyway. So if we're going to put pressure, political pressure on Kathleen Wynne, we're going to have to go into target liberal ridings and make those MPPs in those ridings feel the pressure. And until they feel that they have to actually pay a political price, they're not going to do anything to stop this. And Kathleen Wynne isn't, you know, she isn't backing down from this for whatever her reasons are that only she knows. Uh, so our strategy is to uh, 
put pressure on liberal MPPs in target ridings and make sure that Kathleen, you know, they can go to Kathleen Wynne and say, you've got to stop this, right? Um, so what we've done so far um, is organize uh, some uh, campaign launches in different communities. Our first one is in Scarborough. That's the flyer you got. So why you should come to this event the well, first reason is, you know, you care about hydro privatization and you want to do something. You know, you've heard a lot of reasons and had some good discussions about it, but you want to be part of a fun, solid action in Scarborough. You know, we've heard lots of amazing things about Scarborough. You should come to this. And um, the other uh, reason why is if you want to target Kathleen Wynne for any privatization, for the privatization agenda in general, this is an important political piece of making sure that she gets that message through Brad Duguid and through Lorenzo Berardinetti. So this isn't just about the Scarborough Liberal MPPs. It is targeting them, but eventually it's about targeting Kathleen Wynne. And it's about hydro, but it's so much more beyond hydro, right? Um, so I just want to share with you a little bit of our campaign uh, materials. So, um, you know, we've got a bit of a campaign in a box and targeting uh, Kathleen Wynne, her circle, Liberal MPPs. This is, these are the people we want to, you know, we want to make them feel the pressure through direct and focused actions. So if you could just go one slide over. So this is, a, this is the kind of billboard uh, we're gonna be putting up in Scarborough actually starting Monday. Um, you'll see the faces of the liberal MPPs are right there. So, you know, they can't really get away from this. We know that the liberal MPPs are gonna be paying attention to this. Um, they will care that their faces uh, are out there for their constituents to see. Um, and there's a giant arrow pointing to their faces, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so next slide. And this is a, a, a sample newspaper print ad, which again has the picture of the Liberal MPP on top of a hydro bill, saying, when you pay your hydro bill, think of liber Liberal MPP so-and-so. This one's Deb Matthews, but this is kind of the template. Um, and the main thing for the campaign is, you know, we are telling these MPPs, you actually have a choice. Um, in some meetings that, you know, I've been part of a couple of meetings with liberal MPPs, you know, lobby meetings, you know, uh, our members, our allies, you know, different people are part of these meetings. And what they tell us, you know, I'm sure you've heard this from politicians, right, is, well, I agree with what you're saying, you know, like, you have my sympathy and all of this, but, you know, my hands are tied. There's nothing I can do about this. You know, I am just a lowly MPP. I have to fall in line. There's nothing I can do about it. But that's not true. They can speak out against it they can go on record to say that this is a bad idea, I'm going to defend the interests of my constituents, and I'm going to say on the record that this is a bad idea. Right? So that's why we have here in bold, you know, this MPP has a choice. You know, you can put the brakes on privatization by speaking out now, or you can go along with this sell-off. Right? So um, again, um, I know most of you are in Toronto. Uh, please come to Scarborough on Saturday. I think it's going to be the launch of a very exciting phase of this campaign. It's going to be boots on the ground. It's going to be going out and leafleting. You know, we've had lots of discussions and people, you know, had a lot of great things to say today. And, you know, please go home and think about that, but then come out on Saturday ready to act. And um, there will be other actions in the DTA in the coming months. Uh, for sure in Beaches, East York, Davenport, Trinity, Spadina, and the Premier's riding Don uh, Valley West. And outside the GTA as well, we're doing um, actions in uh, London, Sudbury, and Thunder Bay. But whatever you can do to help us increase our capacity on the ground, please come out to our events. Uh, that's what we need now. Uh, we already have a strategy. We've uh, you know had the discussion. We have our ta talking points. What we do uh, you know need now is translate that into actual political pressure. So uh, we're counting on you for that, and you'll be hearing from us. And I'm going to hand it over to John, who will talk about Toronto Hydro. Oh, there you go. There's a bus thing. I forgot, oh, that. I forgot that one. Thanks very much, Preeti. Sorry about that. I'm John Camilleri. Um, I am privileged to represent the thousand members that work uh, at Toronto Hydro. I come uh, from a local with a long history of opposing hydro privatization. Uh, we can go back to uh, the late 90s and uh, the... Um, I guess in inception of the Ontario Electricity Coalition coming out of our local and uh, with great leaders um, like uh, Brother Fairley, uh, Brother Connor, Brother Solano uh, over the last number of years. Um, and the discussion here is, is incredible today. Um, you know, it comes down to who we elect. 
because we own Hydro One, we own the original Ontario Hydro, and we own Toronto Hydro. So it's the elected officials who end up uh, taking what is actually rightfully ours away. Um, and with the Hi uh, Keep Hydro public campaign, uh, with phase two going into into uh, being launched uh, in early February, looked at what and how it's going to affect Toronto Hydro. So you know, I think it was five or six years ago where they they that trial balloon of the Super Corp with uh, Hydro One and um, OPG or Ontario Lottery Corporation um, that went out and it, it kind of fizzled because there was massive. Uh, opposition to it. So earlier this year, you know, with that trial balloon, they, they, they had done it, and then, you know, with the Hydro One 15% uh, sale, they tried it with Toronto Hydro with that trial balloon coming out in early January saying that, uh, you know, it, it might be up for sale and up to 49%. So uh, our local looked at what needs to be done uh, uh, with the Toronto Hydro campaign to keep it public. It's a, it important to us that um, if we stop the, the remaining 85% sale um, and with the relaunch, we'll be able to get the councillors um, in those ridings to realize that um, it's a bad idea. We've won the argument. The argument has been won. We know, everyone knows it's not a good idea, but the city councillors will really understand the pain that what happens with these M MPPs in Scarborough Center and Scarborough Southwest that they're having. If they have any thought of selling Toronto Hydro, that they're going to go through the same pain that these uh, MPPs are going through. You know, it's important that we turn that the whole opposition to privatization, be it Toronto Hydro, be it TCHC, be it Toronto uh, Parking Authority, right? In Toronto, we, we, have to, we have to make sure they understand that they can't do that. It's a public asset and it needs to stay a public asset. Um, we've, with our local, within our local, we'll probably have 50 or 60 members out on Saturday. Um, they understand the, the urgency of it. This is not the first time it's happened in, you know, it come up in the last six years. This is the third time that it's come up with the sale of, uh, of Toronto Hydro. But this mayor is a lot smarter than our last mayor. As you can probably tell, he is a softer, so, but he's just as mean, just as vindictive, right? And these councillors have to understand if they attempt to sell Toronto Hydro, they will not be reelected. We have to make sure that these MPPs understand that the next election, they have to pay the price. So we'll be going through, um, similar to what the uh, Save Canada Post did, going to be going door to door um, with the, the campaign to keep Hydro Public and the MPPs. Um, if it becomes part of uh, the agenda and it's right out there that they are going to sell it, um, they will feel the pain the same way with those um, bull, uh, billboards, with those flyers in the in the uh, in the wards. So it's just it's really what we're trying to do is expand on what uh, Keep Hydro uh, public campaign is and be, make it specific to uh, to to Toronto Hydro. We're looking at adding um, Etobicoke, Etobicoke Center, or Etobicoke North to um, what uh, we have for the Keep Hydro Public campaign. It's important, uh, you know, we, we sat at uh, Queen's Park and the Liberal MPP would say, I really don't want to sell it. I don't agree, I, it's not good. And then they stood up in uh, June and said, in favor, in favor, in favor. So they can't say they're not in favor. So, um, you know, really, really hope you can, you can make it out um, it's probably two hours of your time, and it'll be uh, a wide range of uh, community and, and union-based uh, people. So it should be fun. And the weather's not going to be too bad. I think minus one, so we're good. I'm just saying it's not often you get to hand out leaflets that have the face of the NPP with an arrow pointing at it, so it'll be, it'll be fun.
Okay, I know it's getting late. Does anybody have, want to say anything about this? I just want to note that this is um, this is like a continuation of one of the, what, the sort of the driving force of people's confidence that you can win this thing because, in fact, they did win. And uh, yeah, it's, everything's mediated. Uh, I mean, uh, Toronto Hydro over, it, it, has waged this battle over and over again. Of course, it's been mediated by this drive to uh, deregulate, uh, they use the term corporatize, which in fact is still driving. But actually, you know, this is, uh, this is you know, there's, there's, a, there's this one, one door which is constant woe, we always lose, another door which is potential winning, and this is one of the, the first door in the left.